Welcome, welcome, welcome to the podcast of Wake Up Church. We've been asleep for too long. This is your host, Dr. Rosalind Best. Please visit the website of bestlegacyfoundation.org for opportunities for scholarships, mentorships, and a chance to leave a lasting legacy. Today's podcast is entitled, God Has No Issues With You Being Trans. Oh, it's not what you think. Let's get it, church. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2 from the NIV, and it says, Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing in, to God. That is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, his pleasing, and his perfect will. Now, the word conform means to be in harmony or accord, to comply with an established institution. It says, do not conform. Do not conform to regiments in a ministry that are against the order of God. Do not comply. Do not be a part of a system that is not getting you in alignment with God, your Lord, your Savior, Jesus, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The word conform means you be in harmony. The word transform means to be changed in your mind and your heart. So you can be transformed and not be transgender. Oh, yes, I'm going to go there now. If we want to be in the image of God, as he says, allow God, that's the first thing, the verb, allow, allow God to shape and mold you into his image. The father wants, he wants you and I to look like him, to act like him, live our lives and conduct our lives to agree with heaven's agenda and heaven's identity of our lives as in earth let it as in heaven let it be in the earth god how did you how do you see me in heaven before i was formed in my mother's womb how did you see me what did you see because you allowed me to come forth in the gender and identity that you designed for me god i can put on a metal helmet and wear it on my head and begin to move around on all fours and have wheels attached to my hands and my and my feet. And it could make me, I could start saying that, you know, I'm a truck. But honestly, I would never be a truck, even if I wanted to identify as a truck. That's not how I was designed to be. I'm not designed to operate on all fours. And so You need to understand that it's not your fault. Let me say that first. Those of you struggling with the LGBT identity, the way you are is not your fault. If you don't believe that there are forces out there trying to warp you and skew you and get you away from the original, the authentic you, you deceive yourself. Satan is alive. Satan is the father of all lies. And he takes pure pleasure in getting us to confirm a false narrative to a generation affected by words. He wants us to say the opposite. If life and death are in the power of our tongues, what are we saying to a child that chooses to identify as a female when they were born a male? Think about that. Can I tell you, based on my observation of the word, We were all born as males. Yes, everybody's a male. But some of us are males with a womb. And some of us are males without a womb. It's as simple as that. I am a male with a womb. This is why I'm referred to as a woman. I'm a man with a womb. And if you are a man without a womb, presenting yourself as a man with a womb, We would call that fraudulent. Something to think about. I 
I may try to appear as if I'm rich and wealthy, but the bank account tells the truth. Donald Trump had many Americans believing that he was much wealthier than he actually was until the tax papers, tax receipts showed that a lot of what he claimed to be something he had, he did not possess. So this is not to bash anyone, but we must never reinforce a lie in an effort to not hurt someone's feelings. You're going to hurt my feelings if I say I'm a girl and I'm not a girl. You're going to hurt my feelings. Satan operates in the emotion realm, your, your thinking, your logic, your emotions. He doesn't operate in, in, in your spirit because that part comes from God. Your flesh comes from the earth. So what does he try to do? Get you so emotional. You're just so emotional about everything. Where did that come from? Many of you had a backbone, and you stood up for what was right. And now you just fold under the, the smallest little crinkle of anything that does not agree with you. Who does that? Your feelings need to be hurt so your soul can be delivered and saved. I'm talking to somebody here today. Now, we as a culture, we have attempted to normalize transgender behavior. Unfortunately, the genetic coding does not lie. You are the father. You are the female. You are the male that God made you to be. Mara Povich ain't the only one with, uh, with DNA. <laughs> There's DNA that says you are exactly what God purposed for you to be. Why would anyone in their right mind accept an alternative lifestyle? Because, beloved, you have been deceived. And you are under a demonic trance that whispers into your soul words that are not from God, words that are not written in the Bible, words engineered from the pits of hell. Satan does not want your seed to grow, men. Satan does not want the womb to incubate a seed that can only come from a man, ladies. He is after your reproductive God-given capabilities. We are all accepting alternatives without accepting the authentic truth. God is not a man that he should lie. But Satan is a spirit that will lie to you right in front of your face. If you were born a man, congratulations, you are a man. As they say, if his mama call him Clashes Clay, then I'm going to call him Clashes Clay. Not Muhammad Ali. Now, we understand that Muhammad Ali was going through a transformation in his spiritual identity and with his name, but the point still, it still stands. What did your mama say you were when you came out of her womb? But more so, what did God say when he created you before you was placed in your mother's womb? What name did God give you before you were birthed in the earth? He knew you before you were created. God knew you and he still knows you. He knows the genuine personality, the sexual identity, and the soul of every person he has created. God knows what he identifies you as. Now, it's up to you to choose to surrender and follow him. Everything we do in life is a choice. Whether we want to admit it or not, I was born like this. <laughs> no, Beyonce sings, I woke up like this. I woke up like this, flawless. Okay, that's her story. But you didn't, work, you didn't wake up like this. I know the LGBTQ community uses God's rainbow as their symbol. I applaud you, and I'm glad that's happening. You know why? Because it represents, that rainbow represents God's mercy and God's ability to restrain from destroying the earth ever again with water. That rainbow is a covenant. And I pray that every one of you wear it on your shirt, your underwear. That it is a constant reminder that God is in covenant with you. If you think you can run away. You think you can dismiss him away. God is coming for you. With loving kindness. Not with. 
He's not like some of your daddies that were abusive. He's not like some of our fathers that were cruel with words. He said, I love you. And I'm drawing you to me. That you can rescue and recover what I gave to you. I pray all of those embarking on alternative lifestyles. Please go to God in prayer. And ask you to make ask, ask him to make you over again. There are many broken reasons why so many people have fallen away from their God-engineered genetic identity. Whatever the reason, know this one thing and rest assured. God loves you regardless of the way you choose to identify. He's not going to love you any more or any less than he does right now with the agenda that he did not assign to you. He still loves you. He has the remedy for those that have a mind that is confused. Many LGBTQ members have no longer entertain that lifestyle because it is a choice. They have accepted Jesus Christ and his forgiveness for the deceptive lifestyle they had entertained. God will never give up on you. He will never give up on us. I beg, I beg and I plead with you to reconsider giving God a chance to get right what Satan has done that's so wrong to you. Don't be transgender, but be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind. The dark side has a goal for unisex, uh, the purpose of the gender. He wants gender fluidity. Now, why would Satan want that? Why would he want everybody saying we're, we're all just one gender? He's after the seed and he's after that garden where that seed can be planted. God made a man first. He modified that creation and made a man with the ability to reproduce, a woman. Now we have sets of people joining in matrimony that don't have any reproductive capabilities. Why is the seed so important to God and should be important to you? God gets an opportunity to see a mini version of you crawling around, walking, and being happy in the earth. God wants to see you in your seed. Whether you adopt them, which is an alternative. But trust me when I say, all the alternatives in the world will never erase the real McCoy. You are the real deal. And God wants to draw you so close to him that nothing else will matter to you but pleasing the only one that can love you back to your best self. God's on a mission to recover all of those that have been deceived, led astray, caught up in a vice and feeling no victory from what they need to get free from. Draw nigh to him and he's going to draw close to you. He won't allow you to stay in the state you're in. You're transgender and you're miserable. You're homosexual and you're miserable. You give off a good front like you got it together. Oh, I'm so happy and gay. <laughs> I'm happy. But what does that soul say at night when you lay there frightened? When you lay there nestled in a place that you shouldn't be and you know it. How do you get out of there? How do you get out of that place? Look up and live. Say, God, I don't know what to do. But if you will help me, I will follow you all the days of my life. I will turn from my wicked ways. I will turn from my unrighteousness. And I will ask you to show me how to be the best version of me that you originally designed me to, de to be. Can we do this? You are the church. You are the believers. God has great purpose for your life. And don't you ever think any less. We can do it. I love you. God loves you. We're going to break these chains and move these stubborn wheels that are in the way of God.